his computer, share screen, desktop, share. You read that. Hey everyone, um, what I'm going to do is uh, do some, some shooting of uh, water drips and uh, kind of give you an idea of what the variation is between all the shots and uh, mess around with some colors and some lights and see what we can do. So uh, everything's all set up. I've got the Adreno in the background uh, on the desktop and it's uh, all adjusted and everything should be set to go. So let's, let's hit some buttons and see what happens. So there's our first shot. And uh, if you notice that the, that the, um, this particular, this is, by the way, is the, is the uh, EOS program that's running and collecting images. Um, this part of the, the image is kind of dark and it would be nice to get a little bit more detail in that area. So um, I'm gonna take a few more shots to see what I think of it. And then I'm gonna to try to move the flash around to get uh, maybe a little bit more detail in there. Wow, those two are just about exactly the same images. And another one, which is exactly the same. So uh, it gives you an idea there's not a lot of variation going on here in this adjustment. These, uh, these systems are, are pretty much dead on the money uh, right here. And there's a really nice shot. So um, it's really nice to shoot tethered and to be able to check focus and all the details in there. Um, let's see if we can put some color in there uh, one way or another. So what I've done is I moved the uh, a little bit of the shadow of the flash. Um, the flash should hit the bottom of that that tray a little bit. There'll also be a lot more light on it. So we'll see if that makes a difference. Holy cow, that looks kind of weird. Um, so there's a, um, a blue piece of paper underneath the, the water bowl right now. And I'm going to move this a little bit further towards this background. The background here is a just a, it's an old water, uh, it's a milk, what is it? It's a soap drip. Um, and it's got a spirograph pattern around it, which is kind of fun. So the idea here is so you can see what an actual shooting session is like and uh, um, see what, you know, so I'm, I've got a little, a little baffle. Uh, I'm gonna move it back a little bit because it's blocky and too much and see if we can get a little bit of light on that bottom, bottom piece. Uh, that's a little bit of light on the bottom piece. Not sure on the exposure. Uh, I'm gonna shoot some more. I know that I'm also shooting RAW and JPEG. So uh, any shot that I really like, I can, I can uh, adjust the exposure quite a bit and get exactly the, uh, uh, the exposure nailed down. Okay, off, off to the side. Not a big fan of those, those splatters off to the side. There's a nice uh, straight one, or at least an angled straight one. And there's coming around. I'll shoot a couple like this, and then I'm gonna switch uh, some of the times with the Adreno code and uh, see if I can get a little bit different patterns. So, um, probably decrease the, the distance uh, in time between the two water drips. That's a pretty nice one. See if we can get a couple more nice ones. Oh, hey, kind of cool. Uh, that's pretty far along on a hit, but um, nice, nice little image there. Kind of like a little teepee house. Um, Basically, everything's all set up here. What I'm just doing is I'm uh, 
waiting until the image is downloaded and I'm triggering the Arduino with a little push button and uh, everything else is computer controlled, which is the way it should be. Um, matter of fact, I could write a program to just do all of this and take a couple hundred pictures and then look at them when it's all done. But it's more fun just sitting here, uh, hit the button, checking the focus and things like that. Um, this is a 105 millimeter Sigma lens. It's on a Canon 5D Mark III. And uh, I can hit the EOS control here and tell you what my exposures are right now. Um, maybe I can do that. Um, my EOS exposures right now, I'm shooting at F400, excuse me, F14 at ISO 400. So uh, we'll keep a couple more here. And then we'll maybe change that bottom color. Um, that's a weird one. We're still missing our second trip on that. There's a second trip back then. Nice and flat. So let's change the spacing between the two drips a little bit and uh, see what we can do with that. And, uh, and then maybe change this color. This color down here, this aqua color or teal color, um, probably needs some, some help one way or the other. It's uh, once again, these would look like they would be great if they're rotated 90 degrees. Uh, this 105 millimeter macro lens doesn't have a huge depth of field, and it would be really nice to get uh, a bigger depth of field out of that. So I might uh, switch to uh, like a 300 millimeter macro that I have. See if I can with better shots. Um, Right now, it appears like I need to change some variables and see what we can uh, make a few other things happen. So this is just uh, real life shooting with a double water drip system. Give you a little bit of experience. Here's the code. Um, this is my delay between the two drips. And I'm gonna decrease this. Uh, this, uh, when I change this number, I might have to change the, uh, the, the, the flash delay, but uh, that's all part of it. I'm gonna change it to 55 milliseconds between the two drips and uh, we'll see what that does with the two drips. It should make them collide a little bit sooner, uh, something more like that. Uh, and it should be pretty repeatable. I'm gonna drop that down. There we go. Now those are the sweet shots. And um, you know, I've done this uh, quite a few times before, so I get a pretty good feeling for what to change uh, at any given time. And of course, we're we're pretty well tuned in, and it's just now a matter of just taking shot after shot after shot and uh, uh, keeping the best ones, deleting the crappy ones, and uh, somewhere along the line, we're looking for that perfect quintessential water drip shot, um, which I don't know exactly what it is, but we'll, uh, we'll get excited about one of these when we see it. This is a really nice shot. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to get a bunch more like this. Look at all the details in there. Um, matter of fact, talking about looking at details, let's uh, do that. I think we can zoom in on this. I guess we can't. Um, that's a quick, quick find. Um, I guess we're just gonna keep going. We can pull that one down in. Uh, that's our 48 shot, by the way. And nice dancing one, nice flat top on that. And uh, pretty, pretty good in the zone here. We'll just keep going for a few more. One more shot is what we all say. Uh, that's kind of the, 
the, the saying that all photographers do, just one more good one and we'll stop. So anyhow, this is a real photo shoot and uh, we'll just keep going along until we get exactly what we're looking for, uh, which might be a while. These sideways ones are going to be the first to go deleted real quick. Um, looks nice, but you know, what are we going to do with that shot? This one has a nice little heart pattern at the bottom. And let's see what else we can get out of here. There's a nice uh, angled one. And uh, just a couple more, one, one more shot, one more. That's a nice one, but not great. It's gotta be just beautiful, perfect is what we're looking for here. Uh, that's pretty nice one there. Definitely pretty nice one. Uh, we've got to look at a color here that, that would be, we've got this, this teal color blow and we'll switch it out with uh, some other color. And of course, what other color would be good except maybe the RIT color, which is orange. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we really want orange underneath there, but we're going to do a couple with orange just because it's, uh, it's, it's uh, the RIT school colors and uh, need something to do with that, I guess. I don't know. There's, <laughs> it's on fire. Uh, so we might be able to do some, some other fun things with that by changing the exposures and such. Let's see what else we can do. Let's do a couple of those just because it does look like it's, it's glowing from underneath a little bit. And then maybe we'll switch his color to something else. Um, I do want one of those nice splashes there. Um, that looks pretty nice. Be nice to have that shot angled a little bit uh, towards, towards the camera and have it nice focus. I like the little ripple patterns. These, these are the ones I really like. With those uh, ripple patterns along the edges, a little bit of uh, splashes leaving. Um, those are the fun ones. And of course, uh, there's a lot of variables here. I'm shooting from about 18 inches uh, height above the water. And one of the things we can do here is we can change that distance to uh, a much higher height. That gives the uh, drips more energy and they, they splash a little bit harder, a little bit higher, and uh, go a little bit wider. So we can, uh, we can switch that variable too. Uh, interestingly enough, you don't need to change any of the variables except the flash duration when you change the height of the drip. So we can pause everything and adjust that and then see uh, what we feel about that. There's a real nice shot. Let's do that. Let's. Uh, Take maybe, oh wow, look at that. Let's do one or two more and then let's change the height and uh, see if we can't get a little bit of different stuff. Those are really nice. Okay, one more. See, okay, maybe just one more. Uh, not that one. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to raise the water up uh, quite a bit, and we'll see what uh, where we're at.
Okay, well, so I raised the uh, the water up uh, and the reservoir up uh, pretty high. I'm, I'm about uh, 80, 85 centimeters above the water. So the first thing you notice is that I've got this splash. It's also uh, tilted a little bit. So I'm going to move on uh, it, it over just a little bit, which I think I can do without too much trouble. Um, and we'll hit it again and we'll see just where the splash is, where the focus is, um, and, and see what's going on. So that's pretty good. The, the drip is hit. It's got the cavitization just early, but it's really early on in the in splash sequence. So I'm going to come over here to the, the flash delay and I'm going to guesstimate that it's about uh, maybe uh, it's still pretty early. So it's 292 millisecond delay. And here we're going to do, uh, we'll change that, that time and see where we're at. Ah, oh, we're still early. So um, kind of fun to see what these, these different shots in the sequence look like as we change that timing. And, uh, we're going to go to about 340, I think somewhere in there. Um, and that changes that delay on the Arduino. We'll go back over here and uh, so we're, we're looking at that for that plume. The plume is coming up. Uh, Still has not had, if, if it had already collision, I'd see all this stuff around it already. But uh, it's also gonna be substantially higher than it has been before. So um, might have to move the camera, we will see. Um, so this is all real speed, um, how you work through these situations and, and figure out the correct timing. Uh, still rising, so uh, this is, I think this is the second drip. Um, we still need some more uh, time delay here. Uh, let's do 75. And I could do some calculations and get this, this pretty close, or I could just play around with some numbers and see uh, what I get. Um, I think I uploaded that. There it is. Uh, and we'll we'll trigger it again and see what we've got. Holy cow! Okay, so a lot more energy there, and uh, from a lot higher uh, position. I'm gonna do a couple here at this this timing, and then I'm probably gonna back this timing off because it looks like it's a little bit uh, extreme for what uh, I'd like to see. So, uh, wow, it looks really nice over in these areas. I love the close up sometimes. Um, I'm gonna do just a couple more here, and then we will uh, back that timing off. You can see that they're, they're pretty flat. There's been a lot of energy here. Look at that, that's what you need. Um, okay, so we'll do a couple, one more here, and uh, we'll see what, what happens. We can. Okay, let's back this, this uh, time off. It's at 375. Let's go back about two, uh, three milliseconds. So it's a uh, 372 millisecond delay after that second drip is, is created. And then uh, let's go back here and uh, see where we're at. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll do a couple here and then we'll back it off a little bit more. We're still uh, pretty far into the drip sequence. Uh, the two collisions have taken place pretty hard. They're nice and flat there.
Okay, so we're gonna go here and then we're gonna back this off to like uh, 368. Um, and see what that, that yields. There, there. Oh, that's cool. So uh, let's do a few more here because I'd like this to be spun around about 90 degrees towards me. See what happens with that. Oh, it's the other direction. Come on, towards me, not away from me. Keep going. It's still pretty flat though. So we can still have, we can still back this off uh, a little bit to, in that time and see if we can get a little something better. That's pretty good. Um, look at the, the, the focus here is as good as this lens pretty much can do. It's at F14. Um, I'm really not going to get that much better with this lens because it is um, a macro lens. We'd like the whole thing to be in focus, but you know, we can't have everything we want. At least not with this lens. It is a good lens though. So got to keep in mind that these are pretty big. They're um, probably a bit bigger than a quarter across. So in a world of macro, they're, they're pretty deep. Um, I can see here that I really want that time to be decreased and I'm gonna bring it back at least four milliseconds. I'll probably end up bringing it back more, but we're gonna start there. And uh, that's kind of interesting. It's, it's, it's just hitting and, and the speed is splattering the top in those pictures. We'll go until we get one more nice one that's pointing towards the camera. Um, maybe not that one. Like that one is really nice. Uh, and of course, just a couple more, just maybe one more shot. Um, one more. Although I think that's, that's probably the best one that we've, we've seen in a while. Um, but the whole idea of doing this is just so you can see what uh, an actual shooting session looks like with the double water drips. And it's, uh, it's pretty fun. It's, it's, each shot is very different from the last one. Um, there's so many variables to move from. I haven't even talked about changing the, uh, the water solutions or adding dyes to the water. Um, we've just changed the lighting a little bit here and um, moved a couple of variables in the code. But um, there's tremendous numbers of variables. And you can realize that uh, this is why it's such a popular uh, little macro activity. Um, and it's sort of an art form all into itself. It's got uh, quite a following around the world with um, people that are interested in building these systems or, or just uh, buying systems that, that can do this and playing around with them until they get um, just the, the shot that they envision. Um, for some reason, somebody's not as happy right now and we're we're not uh, exactly at the spots we want. Here are these two collisions that just happened. We're just beginning to, to, uh, to, to splash apart. Um, but anyhow, um, I should stop this. I'm gonna run out of uh, flash memory on board the camera in a little bit here. I'm saving to the, the computer and the camera. But um, all in all, hope you had fun watching this. Uh, this is what a real double water drip shooting session is like. And um, hopefully you can build your own system and have some fun with it. Take care. Bye-bye.